Hello, in this new video I'm going to show you how to use the same uh, plugin, multi-template matching, uh, this time for the detection of multiple objects in your image. I'm using a new type of samples, uh, those are Medaka fish larvae, uh, another fish that we use in research, <coughs> but they are also sitting in a, a 96 wild plate. Uh, so these images are provided by a colleague of the campus, Jakob Ketten, I'm really grateful to him for providing them. Uh, and again, it's just a stack of grayscale image. And um, well, yeah, the difficulty here is that uh, if you were using segmentation, because they have very low contrast because the background, it's quite complicated to have um, to isolate them. So template matching is actually a quite straightforward way, um, as I'm going to show you. So I assume you already installed the, the plugin. Um, so this time I'm using this one, uh, this image as a template, and I'm going to perform some uh, template pre-processing uh, to increase the chance the probability to find my objects because they are kind of randomly oriented compared to the template. So if you are using only this one, I'm not sure I would manage to catch them all. So we're going to do flipping along the two axes, kind of mirroring and uh, rotating also the flipped version. So it, uh, basically I'm, I'm rotating by every 90 degree. And uh, so if you count the initial rotation of zero degrees, um, we have th four rotations plus uh, three initial templates. So the initial one and the two flipped ones. So three times four, we get 12 templates, which means 12 correlation maps and on those correlation map, then uh, we'll, the plugin is going to uh, return the best uh, locations. Uh, like previously, I'm using this cross correlation score, um, not going to detail it again, and I'm expecting four objects in each image, right? Again, if you don't know the number, you can put a high value and then uh, rely on the threshold to return uh, the meaningful locations. Um, again, for correlation, uh, a good score is close to one. So by putting a score threshold of 0.5, um, I would collect only value above this score um, before um, isolating the four best uh, of them that do not overlap. So the overlap criterion uh, is also between zero and one, and it's uh, actually the maximal value between uh, two bounding boards that overlap, uh, maximum value for the intersection of a union. So let's run it and then I'm, I'm going to illustrate it with the image. So as you can see here, the processing is happening. We get like previously the detection to the ROI manager. Um, it's a bit slower than uh, previously with the single templates because we have 12 correlation maps and for each of them we need to uh, perform detection to the maximum. So it's, it's a trade-off between uh, providing more templates to have a uh, higher probability to find your objects, but also increasing then uh, the computation time. So as you can see already, we have uh, in some cases overlapping detections, so kind of redundant detection of the same objects. Here again, so that one, one was actually missed. Um, we get our result table like usually. So for each detection, you get the image name, what template was used. So you can even see what transform version of the template was used, the score and uh, the coordinate for the bounding box. Okay. So let's quickly come back to here uh, or even this one, for instance. So this bounding box was returned because um, the score for its detection was higher than for this one, strangely. Uh, but maybe like the highs were creating, uh, um, correlating very well, or this area here. And the value for this uh, uh, overlap, which is between, uh, let's say, bounding box 36 and 39, uh, the, the, the ratio that is calculated is this intersection over union of the two bounding box. And if they were returned, it means uh, that this value of intersection over union was uh, below uh, the maximum overlap. 
uh, which means that we should probably reduce our threshold to allow uh, a smaller overlap. So yeah, clearly now using 30% of overlap is too high because this are overlapping and redundant. This one is also redundant detection. This one too. So let's let's try to reduce uh, the maximal overlap and let's see if we increase if we improve our detection. So now I'm going to put 25%. Uh, I don't want to see the result table this time. And let's see if we manage to prevent overlapping detection. So again, this parameter is also a um, trade-off between the possibility to detect close object and preventing overlapping detections. Preventing a uh, redundant detection at least of the same object. So we still allow overlapping detection if they are below uh, the threshold, right? So it seems that now reducing uh, just by 5% um, allowed uh, the proper detections in most cases. All right, very good. Good, so it worked in most cases. Um, as you can see, in some cases, like this guy would, would look kind of different than the template we provided was not found, and it rather correlated with the background. Um, in some cases, we also add only three detections instead of four. Uh, probably that the fourth one was not found because the uh, correlation was actually below uh, 0.5, below the score threshold. But in, in most cases, it's, it worked quite well, right? Um, I'm going to show you another example. So you can also perform uh, multiple, like high number of uh, object detection um, with uh, just a few templates. And this, this is fast actually. What is slow is when you use a lot of templates. So here I have just a montage of head detected previously by um, uh, the, in the previous video, for instance, and I just cropped one high. So let's, Use this eye as a template. Yeah, I'm going to flip it vertically. So this flipped version now can also match uh, the second eye. Ver horizontal flipping, I don't need rotation, I don't need. Um, now in this big image, I have 96 heads times two eyes, so I expect 192 objects. I actually expect no overlap at all and I can keep a score threshold of 0.5. Let's run it. So now it looks kind of buggy, but you can see that the error eye manager is actually uh, recovering error eyes, and it was very fast, as you can see, and almost all eyes were detected, right? So yeah, using a few templates is fast, uh, even for the detection of multiple objects. What is slow is using more templates because the computation is repeating. All right, um, so I come to the end of this video um, and I, thanks, I thank you for watching. Uh, in the next one, I'm going to detail a bit more about um, the macro recording of, of, uh, of those plugins.